Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, dear partners, I'm pleased to welcome you to the bioevolution bio webinar dedicated to the aqua industry today. The subject of the webinar will be the health effects of beta 1.3, 1.6 leucon and nucleotide supplemented feed in major aquaculture species. My name is Ivan Gospodinov and I'm a technical feed sales manager at BioRegion in Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that by participating in this webinar, we're in the right place and at the right time. Together, let us success accelerate the exchange of ideas and scaling up of good practices. I would like now to welcome our speakers for today. The webinar will begin with Mr. Joao Koch. Joao is from Brazil and he works for BioRegion as Global Technical and Product Manager in Aquaculture. He has a PhD degree in the area of fish nutrition. Joao specialized mostly in the field of yeast and yeast der derivatives. He joined BioRegion in 2016. Initially, he was working as a research as a researcher and was member of BioRegion Research and Development Center. Later, he was asked to join the technical team. Our second and major speaker for the day will be Dr. Paul Mittling. Dr. Mittling is from Norway. He's a veterinarian, founder, and the chief, chief executive officer of Aqua Medic, and also co-founder of company Arctic Feet Ingredients from Norway. Dr. Paul has more than 35 years of professional experience in the field of disease control and possess extensive expertise across salmon industry, not only collected from Norway, but internationally as well. He has PhD degree in fish vaccinology and numerous kind of activities in conducting and interpretation of fish experiments and field trials. He deals on a regular basis with vaccination and other preventative measures associated with farm, farm fish disease control and prevention. For those of you who may need to see this webinar again, I would like to inform that a recorded version of this event will be available very soon. So please feel free to ask your local representative and he or she will gladly support any of you. I also would like to inform that at the end of our presentation session, we will be open for taking questions. So please feel free to prepare some at the time of the talks and please send your questions through the, our question and answers icon that appears on your screens. I would like to wish all of you a very successful webinar. Thank you very much. Dear Joao, the stage is yours now. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, BioRegion webinar series. Uh, I hope that uh, all of you were doing well and safe during this challenge time. Uh, first, I, I would like to thank you uh, very much for your time and availability to, to be here today. Uh, I am João Fernando, uh, the Global Technical Manager for Aquaculture, and uh, I will be the presenter, uh, the speaker for the introduction part. Okay, uh, as Ivo said, some words about myself. Uh, I can go directly to the first part uh, of the presentation. Please, uh, if you have some question, just write down on the chat. And uh, at the end of the presentation, it's going to be a pleasure to answer it. Okay, now we're going to explore better the bioregion products uh, and their application in fish diets. Okay, uh, just talk some words about bioregion. Uh, our company is a Brazilian company founded in 2003. And since then, uh, we use scientific knowledge uh, and biotechnology to improve the health and welfare uh, of humans and also animals. Uh, through our biotechnological expertise, we produce natural uh, ingredients for human and animal nutrition. Uh, we provide natural ingredients that contribute to palatability, shelf life extension, uh, alternative protein sources, uh, with an interest in amino acid provi profile and uh, some other ingredients that promote uh, health in animals and also uh, that is our functional ingredients. Okay. Uh, 
Just to talk about our proposal, one of our goals is to add value in animals and humans' life. Uh, and as a, as a consequence, we add value to our uh, clients' product too. Okay. Uh, by region, it's important to say it's a, a part of a bigger group called uh, Zillor uh, that farms sugarcane uh, to produce ethanol and sugar. And due to this, we have a, a great know-how uh, how in the fermentation process uh, and this knowledge is also applied for bioregion products. Uh, we have four production units. Uh, three of them uh, are located in Brazil, and uh, we have uh, the focus here uh, to produce ingredients derived, uh, derived um, from East, and one unit located in United States, and then uh, the main activity is to produce fermented ingredients from beneficial bacteria like uh, Lactobacillus plantarum. Okay, uh, my region has more than 500 customers uh, distributed uh, around uh, 60 countries and to improve our relationship with our clients, uh, we have offices, uh, warehouses and sales uh, representatives in several places. Uh, here in Brazil, we also have our uh, center of research and development. It's always important to mention where all the time we are developing uh, new technologies, products, and give some support to our clients. Our company is constantly uh, investing in people and structure, and uh, the company increases fourfold its production capacity since the beginning, since 2003. Uh, the feed segment focus to, to solve problem in the animal uh, production chain and also improve the life quality of pets. And uh, because of this, its primary concept is uh, to work uh, with the functionality of the ingredients. For this, we have a, a special yeast strain that has uh, an important role on the development uh, of natural ingredients such as uh, beta glucans and mannans, uh, high quality protein, uh, peptides, and nucleotides. Uh, and through these ingredients, we improve diet palatability and also uh, boost natural defenses uh, of the animals during challenge periods uh, in their lives uh, as a whole. Okay. Um, here is a quick, uh, quick overview about uh, our portfolio for all the species. So there is Macrogar, that's our purified beta-glucan, 1,3,1,6, and it uh, has a immunomodulatory properties as uh, we're gonna show, show you later. Uh, Dr. Paul uh, are gonna explain more about the concept behind this product. And we also have two prebiotic solution, Activimos, uh, our standard prebiotic, and hypergen, uh, where the manas uh, are soluble and there will be uh, extra benefits from their solubility. Okay, uh, if you have some question related to this product, we can comment later in another opportunity. Just uh, let us know about this. Proteomic is the mycotoxin absorbent and Selimox the source of organic selenium. Uh, Biotide Extra, that is uh, going to be also the focus of this presentation, uh, is rich in nucleotides uh, that also promotes intestinal health and uh, nutritional ingredients. Uh, we have inactive and alkalized yeasts with high levels uh, of proteins. Okay, so uh, I would like to say Thank you, muchas gracias, obrigado. Uh, this was just a quick presentation uh, that I had to show you. From now on, the word uh, is all from Dr. Paul, and uh, I take the opportunity once again to thank you, Dr. Paul for accepting our invitation. Dr. Paul, please. João, thank you for this brief presentation. 
Joao, thank you for this brief presentation, very informative introduction. So now, Dr. Mittling, please go ahead and introduce ourselves, uh, introduce yourself to the presentation, as well as please proceed with the talk. Thank you. Yes, uh, good afternoon. It's afternoon here in good Europe. Morning. My name is Paul Mittling from uh, Norway. I will try to share uh, this PowerPoint presentation with you on clinical studies of the health effects of beta-1316 glucans and nucleotide supplemented feeds in major aquaculture species. Uh, because I'm from Norway, it will, all, it will of course be uh, Many of my examples will be from the Atlantic salmon aquaculture. The origin of many ingredients used in functional foods and functional feeds for functional foods for humans and functional feeds for animals come from the baker's yeast or brewer's yeast with the Latin name Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Uh, it's above all the polysaccharides from the cell wall the insoluble ones, which are beta-1,3, 1,6 uh, glucans, and it's the soluble ones, which are mana and oligosaccharides, so which often is shortened, uh, abbreviated as MOS. Uh, the, parts, the other parts of the yeast cell is also used. Uh, then that's the part of cytoplasm and nucleus, which is used to uh, manufacture preparations with increased nucleotide contents. The beta-1316 glucans are cell wall fibers. And they, as I said, they are insoluble, insoluble in water. And their particular feature is that there is a linkage between glucose molecules by 1,3 bonds, but also a branching of these chains by 1,6 bonds. And the bonds is, is denoting the position of the glucan, the glucan uh, uh, cyclic molecules. On the bottom here, you see the, the, the fiber itself, the straight line, with two branches in 1,6 position. They are bound together in 1,3 position. And the two, branch, two branches are, can be seen uh, on top of the figure uh, in one sixth position. What is the, why is the branching structure important? Because it is responsible for binding to immune cells. And the binding is necessary that they will exert their, in, their effect on immune cells. And unbranched glucose chains do not bind, for example, to macrophages. It's also found that the longer side branches induce stronger biological effects than shorter side branches. So typically branches with three molecules uh, induce stronger, as shown below, is induce stronger biological effect than branches with only one side, uh, side uh, chain molecule, a glucose molecule in it. Typically, microingredients of beta-1316 glucans contain 60% or more uh, beta-glucans on the weight basis. The more important point is not all beta-glucans are equal. This was proven very quite early, already in 1981, by the researchers from the University of Tromsø here in Norway, Rolf Seljelid, Jarlbergvall and Åke Lundvall. Uh, and it was published already in 1981. They, they assayed uh, uh, close to 50 different um, cell wall uh, glucose components, glucans, which is uh, chains of glucose molecules, and glycans, which are chains of other sugar molecules, and found major differences in their biological effects on macrophages from these different uh, chain types molecule types. The most uh, common effects and the strongest effects you can you see and uh, it's also most research of, of beta-1316 glucans on the uh, are on the non-specific defenses of animal and 
biological animal organisms, what so also often is termed the innate immunity. It's the increase of lysozyme activity. And lysozyme, as the name says, is, is uh, an enzyme that causes ly lysis of bacteria. Uh, there are a number of tissues or secretions in the animal kingdom are naturally high on lysozyme. Egg white, for example, is, uh, is the one is, is high on lysozyme. That's why the eggs don't, don't uh, deteriorate so fast. And it's uh, used as a standard in, in, in lysozyme assays. Uh, colostrum and milk are high on lysozyme. Uh, maybe uh, you will know that lacrimal fluid is very high on lysozyme. Uh, you can understand the reason because the eye is a very delicate organ and any bacterial infection, uh, it's, it's important to have a good defense against bacterial infections of the, of the eye mucosas. But blood serum and plasma and mucus of many animals and also fish contain lysozyme, this enzyme that can be measured. The second feature is the increase, the stimulation of, of macrophage activity by the beta-1316 glucans. And uh, the macrophages is also given by the name, they are uh, phagocytic cells, they, they, they eat, engulf non-self particles, for example, bacteria, or even in, uh, even in uh, cancer cells are being uh, attacked or engulfed by macrophages. Um, and, uh, which is uh, and by doing when doing that they also develop uh, excrete cytokines to uh, providing a signal to other immune cells of getting uh, of, of activating or suppressing the, their activity and the macrophage activity was actually the feature that inspired the brand name macroguard which is uh, the, the best known uh, it was uh, originally marketed in Norway and is now uh, part of uh, BioRegin uh, portfolio. There is, there is a lot of research on beta-glucans. Uh, not only the 1,3,1,6, but also 1,3 beta-glucans and others, and a lot of their modes of action and a lot of their effects, and it's quite immense, and it's also well published in all, all kinds of scientific journals. I think um, the count uh, indicates uh, of one of the references that you will see in this, uh, that there is uh, more than 3,000. If you count all the publications from all effects in all species uh, together. Studies on effects of beta glucans in teleost are certainly above 200 citations. Uh, however, the majority of beta-glucan publications is in, is, is in the basic science disciplines, biological mechanism, gene expression effects, effects on cells, effects on in vitro models. And there are relatively few published papers that deal with in vivo effects on infectious or infections or infectious diseases, and surprisingly few deal with clinical effect of the major aquaculture segments such as, such as the salmonid aquaculture. Being a veterinarian myself, uh, I'm of course uh, most interested in the proof of the pudding, which basically is the action and effects of any given substance in the live animal itself. And that's the reason why I focused my presentation on just the clinical studies, results from the clinical studies of using these beta-glucans and the other micro ingredients uh, functional feed ingredients that I will discuss today. First clinical study uh, was published, uh, it's, it took place quite a long time ago, it was published in 2019 and it shows that uh, beta-glucans can improve vaccine protection against winter ulcers and infectious salmon anemia. Uh, the importance of this is, is that both of these vaccines are not providing complete immunity. There, there is partial, it's, it's reasonably good protection, but it's, it nevertheless, it is also, it's not, it's not very high protection. 
So vaccination alone, there, is still, there are still disease problems and outbreaks despite of vaccination. Mm. The first the slide I show you here is showing the trial setup is giving an overview. It started with um, 12 weeks of priming the fish with either controlled diet or beta glucan supplemented diet. After uh, 12 weeks, the, the feeding groups were split in half. Half was were vaccinated with a common vaccine and the second half remained unvaccinated. And that was the same for both dietary groups. And five weeks after vaccination, end of the feeding trial, uh, the fish was individually marked and subjected to, experiment, uh, to experimental challenges. One fish were individually marked, Put, all groups were put in the, together in a tank and was subjected to isovirus challenge or Moritella viscosa challenge. Altogether, the trial took almost half a year to complete. It was, a, it was actually a major uh, venture. The results from the Moritella viscosa challenge is, are shown here. Uh, Moritella viscosa is being challenged is being carried out by dipping, uh, keeping the fish for some minutes uh, in uh, a concentrated solution with con a high concentration of live Moritella viscosa bacteria. So it's, it's a bath challenge technique that was carried out. What says here on day zero? And this, uh, the, the, the following uh, 25 days, the fish were observed and the occurrence of mortalities were recorded. And what you see in the figure is a survival curves of the various uh, groups in, that were in the challenge tank. Um, you will see the, this black line with a, a triangle they started out with 100%, but at the end of the trial, they were less than, they were maybe oh, there were only 30% of fish surviving. The unvaccinated macroguard supplemented group, which is a straight line with gray dots, didn't make too good either. A little bit. Uh, higher survival, but uh, still less than 50% survived. The vaccinated group fared better. The control fed and vaccinated fish experienced some 25, close to 25% mortalities. And the best performance, the best survival was in the group vaccinated fish that had received macroguard supplemented feed, the, the top line uh, with the dotted line and the gray dots uh, where there were, where there were uh, less than 10% mortalities. This, uh, the letters on the right hand side denote the, the significance and it's clear that the vaccinated fish uh, was uh, clearly statistically significant survival and the, the macro guard fed and vaccinated fish in its own what statistically significant higher survival than the others. Uh, some of the fish, the surviving fish at day 25 from this trial were alive, but they had ulcers. They had developed ulcers due to the challenge. And this results presentation, which is taken from the from the uh, paper that is denoted on the bottom of the slide, uh, shows the differences. If the differences are come even clearer out, if you take the ulcers, uh, they're from uh, white is no lesions visible, uh, light gray is mild lesions, uh, two uh, dark gray is severe lesions, and the three ones were the ones that succumbed before end of the trial. 
But you see the differences between the macro guard, the, the, the macro guard vaccinated fish with 50% uh, fish that showed uh, were alive and showed no re reasons versus the control fish vaccinated with only 34% of the fish were alive and showed no lesions. I think that that shows that uh, the, the, the protective effect against all clinical manifestations of the, in, of the disease were, uh, were clear and statistically reliable. The other half of the half of that group was was uh, challenged with infectious salmon anemia, which is a which is a, an influenza uh, virus disease of uh, Atlantic salmon. Here, the challenge was performed by inoculating a number of fishes and letting them into the tank to develop disease and shed virus into the water by natural, uh, in a natural way. And you see the, 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 the survival, the, the curve that, that dips from day uh, 17, 18 onwards, and is uh, by day 21 is basically nobody uh, surviving. That's the challenger fishes, the shedder fishes that have been, uh, that are shedding the virus into the water and set up an epidemic among the other fishes from the test groups control and test fed groups in the same tank. The challenge was very strong because you see the, the control group here, the, blood, the, 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 the black line with triangles, the solid black line with triangles on it, they were actually all dead by day 40. It's a bit, a bit harder challenge that you would like to have in such a trial, but it's, you, cannot, you can't really, with this setup, the, 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 the advantage of a natural challenge route is bigger than the statistical disadvantage. Uh, the unvaccinated macroguard fed fish, uh, gray solid line, gray dots on the bottom also had almost no sur survivors. But the, the macroguard uh, fed fish that were um, vaccinated had a survival of about 30 percent and it's clearly statistically significant uh, from the other three groups. These diseases are two examples of important, at least in the salmonid world, important uh, infectious diseases uh, in situations where the vaccines are suboptimal. And with, I think there is a lot of, uh, lot of uh, other diseases. I've put up three uh, references here from uh, bacterial infections in Nile tilapia, 2017, the Pangasius from Vietnam uh, in 2015, and an uh, experiment giving an in vivo effects of beta-glucan uh, feeding from Yersinia rooker uh, in rainbow trout against the two Yersinia rookery infection. You can also find uh, uh, quite comprehensive review articles on the effects of beta glucans in fish, and I've uh, uh, set up four of those here, uh, from tw two from 2013, uh, one from 2015 from a Norwegian author, one of the, the fathers of beta-glucans and, and innate immunity research in fish, and one from 2020 where also uh, Joao Fernando Alves Koch is one of the authors uh, that I recommend you to read and study for, for in-depth study of the beta-glucan effects. There are some upcoming evidence for anti-inflammatory effects of beta-glucans in terrestrial animal species, and I show you three of them here that are uh, pictures of the, the, the title pages of publications. That inspired uh, a pilot study, which is study two, to evaluate if such effects could be seen also in salmon. 
We used uh, Atlantic salmon post molds. They were reared in seawater at quite cold ambient temperature. Um, the feed groups were split between two tanks. So each feed, uh, two tanks with uh, control feed and two tanks with test feed, which was uh, the, basically the base feed top coated with one gram per kilo of macroguard. And due to temperature, feeding rate was uh, between 1 and 1.2% of the tank biomass every day. <clears throat> Timeline, four weeks of priming. Then we, uh, we, there was the fish was vaccinated. And why was that? That was to, in order because we know that vaccination of, with the common salmon vaccines that induces a sterile inflammation in the abdomen of the fish. They are multivalent adjuvanted vaccines, and it's quite known. In this case, we needed, we could not use an experiment and in infection because the facility did not allow us to, uh, to uh, use uh, experimental infection to induce any uh, inflammation. Uh, the results showed that uh, the uh, confirmed that in this, that the same uh, results could be found in fish that has been reported from terrestrial animals. That with time, uh, three of the inflammation associated genes showed a clear uh, reduction in expression. In this case, the, the, it is depicted as a, in, uh, is the, is the re expression relative to the expression of a housekeeping gene which is known to have a stable exp uh, expression in, over time. Uh, TNF-alpha, interleukin-10 and interleukin-17 alpha were all, they were all a reduction in the macroguard uh, uh, fed or supplemented feed group. Uh, was no differences were seen in interleukin-1 beta. This were from cells in the head kidney, which is an immune organ of Atlantic salmon. And it's well, basically the same thing was seen in uh, the spleen, which is an immune, immune organ with a, with a, with a different uh, cell composition than the head kidney, with uh, quite a, many uh, look, uh, lymphocytes in the spleen. Again, the, the, three, the three same uh, genes were downregulated in macroguard uh, fed, fed the fish. Uh, a third study was done in the, with the, in, in the same setup, more or less. In this time, with smaller uh, Atlantic salmon, they were pre smalls 120 grams. Uh, they were held in a freshwater recirculation aquaculture system uh, with a temperature, water temperature of around 14 degrees. Again, split between two tanks. Test feed was uh, the control feed top, uh, top coated with one uh, gram per kilo uh, macroguard. 1000 ppm and but the feeding rate due to higher temperature was 1.8 percent per day and in this case we chose a, a, a 60 days of priming was uh, also a commercial available multivalent adjuvanted uh, salmon vaccine this work is actually been was part of the master cases approved by the norwegian university of life science from a lady originating from peru Anna Carolina Sulen Tavara. <clears throat> Although the, the figure is just made up a little bit different, we can see that on the right hand side there was this, an inflammatory, the, the expression of inflammatory genes was higher with was high, became high with time after a month. There is a chronic inflammation going on. While in the beta glucan uh, supplemented group on the right hand side, the, the expression after a month is very low. It's clear down also there down regulation to be observed. And the same thing with uh, cells when we uh, investigated cells from the spleen. Uh, the control group, control fed group, high uh, expression in uh, the end of the trial, the beta glucan group low expression at the end of the trial. These results on anti-inflammatory effects are, there aren't very many, 
but they are actually in line with findings reported from other fish species than salmonids. In this case, I show you uh, a work coming from uh, a European uh, project group that was published in 2012, uh, reduced inflammatory response in common carp that to, to our monosomal acid infection common carp that were fed with beta-glucan supplements. It also was also a, a macrogar feeding study. Uh, there, is, <laughs> there, is a, there is an upcoming evidence of, of beta-glucan's effect on wound healing in fish. And we was inspired by earlier papers and the two of them I have uh, showed you, showing you here on the on the left hand side of the slide. Uh, so it, inspired by those, we initiated a study with oral macroguard supplemented feed using a zebrafish as a model and a tissue regeneration model in zebrafish. The zebrafish is an, is a, is a, an interesting and, and it's a small but uh, versatile uh, experimental animal. And it has the natural capacity to regenerate both fins, uh, fin tissue, and actually also heart tissue, which is, it does it, it makes it very popular for, for human studies. Uh, the picture here is show how, the, how you, you then amputate the tail fin above, and how that tail fin gradually grows again to normal, back to normal size. One day, day per amputation, four days per amputation, seven days uh, after amputation. And then actually what here was done was it measured, let's say, the, the new tissue, the regenerated tissue area. You will see it on the, on the bottom line of the pictures. There is a yellow, slight yellow line there. And on the right hand side of that is actually the, the regenerated tissue area that was measured. The, these uh, results are actually uh, published in 2019. The feed supplementation was 0 0.35 gram of macroguard per kilo feed, 350 ppm of a kilo zebrafish feed, mm. which is hardly dispensed in kilos, by the way. Um, the figure shows here, uh, it shows, let's say, the, the, the the, the speed of, uh, of, of uh, regenerate the regeneration done to a quadratic regression of the daily rege regenerated area. It's uh, where you see that the, the faster the, the regeneration, the higher the curve. And the bottom line is the, from the control fish while the two top lines are two groups that were supplemented with, uh, with, with control feed supplemented with macroguard. And the authors conclude quite that the results show that uh, including 1316 beta glucans in zebra fish diet enhances tissue regeneration and likely the wound healing process. The fin regrowth value of the amputated control group was significantly lower than that observed in both groups treated with beta glucans. Let me just uh, add a comment to that one. I was wondering uh, what is the mechanism for this? And it's not quite clear. However, remembering that that lysozyme is found in mucus and the the, uh, that the, the, the closure of wounds in fish is extremely fast uh, by natural way. It's, we're talking about probably by the zebra fish, the temperature of zebra fish, it's probably a few hours before the mucus has migrated to close the wound and stop any leakage of uh, tissue electrolytes. That could be, in my opinion, is a, is a, is a likely or a, a probable uh, mechanisms for this, the fish, the, the effects that we see on uh, wound healing or on, uh, in uh, zebra fish on, 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 in this case, on, on tissue rate regeneration. But let me go to the nucleotides. They are functional microingredients for cultured fish. They are needed to uh, form nucleic acid. 
and they can be synthesized de novo, as it's called, or in the so-called salvage page with, by degradation of amino acids and nucleotides in the diet. So a study uh, provided to me, the data provided to me for buried in Brazil, shows protection against SRS, which is an infection with, caused by the Piscorichetia salmonis bacterium uh, in an experimental challenge setup. It's a similar situation where you have an, uh, uh, a period of acclimation on the left-hand side, then uh, in, the, in green, the uh, period of control feed or, or uh, nucleotide supplemented feeds, and then a challenge period to the right. Um, in this case, it worked biotide extra, which has a 26.6% of nucleotide content. Uh, 60 gram Atlantic salmon, but the challenge was here by intraperitoneal injection after 20 days of uh, feeding uh, the, the diets, uh, attempting to uh, inoculate an LD50 dose. Uh, again, <laughs> like we saw in the, in the ISA virus challenge, to, to, to hit 50 per, or uh, uh, the, 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 the desired level of mortality is, can sometimes be very difficult. And more inoculation challenges is one of them, at least with some of the bacteria. So here it was again, it was a high, high mortality. The tree control tanks, the fish from tree control fed tanks had 72 and a half, 80 and 87 and a half. Uh, an average of 80% uh, cumulative mortality, and uh, three groups, three tanks with, that had received nucleotide supplemented feeds, uh, one with 55, one with 57 and a half, but the third one with 82 and a half. That makes uh, 65 and a half on, uh, percent cumulative mortality on average. Uh, so there is a protective effect to be uh, indicated by this one. Um, if you wish to have further reading on nucleotides for fish feeds, uh, I can recommend you three of uh, the, the, these articles, uh, original articles on the top. The first one, which is kind of the first real, real, real breakthrough, is uh, by uh, researchers working at that time, working for EBOS. Um, but they're from 2001 and then from 2011, and actually the uh, last one I found was 2015. And there are also two good review articles, the last one by a Norwegian researcher from Tromsø called uh, with Eina Ringer, and uh, the, the, the bottom one from last year, from 2020. And what's left then? We have seen, we have the beta glucans from the cell wall, we have the nucleotides from the cytoplasm and nucleus, manon oligosaccharides. These are also uh, cell wall elements, but they are water soluble. And they are, uh, nevertheless, they are named dietary fibers in human and animal nutrition. Um, but they don't have glucose molecules in the chain, they have other molecules. In, in case of MOS, it is manan sugar molecules as a chain. Uh, experience in the nutrition of humans and terrestrial animals suggests they function as appetizer and support the beneficial parts of the intestinal microflora, those on out competing or suppressing intestinal pathogens. Uh, improved growth and alleviation of certain intestinal pathologies are among the reported effects also in aquaculture fish species. So, there is a, a sixth study that I, I can share with you, which also is published, and the publication reference is, on, uh, is given on the bottom of the page. This was a full fish meal control diet, was compared by two diets that were rich on plant proteins, where the fish, uh, fish protein had been replaced by soybean meal or soybean meal plus sunflower meal. The vegetable protein formulations and recipes were supplemented with moderate amounts of macrogard or uh, manan oligosaccharides. Normal uh, study setup in mini cages, 150 Atlantic salmon, feeding and con of control and test diet 70 days, at approximately 12 degrees centigrade, causing it's about a doubling of the weight of the fish. 
all the results, and I couldn't, I cannot bring all groups here, but the fish meal control had a specific growth rate and a thermal growth coefficient, uh, growth rate of 132 and 2.95 was actually the, the same with the, the fish meal supplemented with some soy meal and some sunflower meal, and the high, highest amount of moss. Uh, in this case, that were two gram per kilo of the feed. Uh, the macro guard did not uh, influence the growth rate that much. The inter there was an enteritis score assigned, and again, the moss uh, had a slightly better performance than the macro guard supplemented group. All the other groups with different uh, here performed poorer than these three. So they, they let's say the, the macro, the macro guard supplemented and the most supplemented were quite, uh, were clo um, cl the closest to the fish meal uh, control group. With sea lice, you will see that uh, the, the situation is different. The fish meal control had uh, 197 lice per 100 fish. Uh, whereas the, the was 77 in the fish meal and, and, pro, and two protein sources plus macro guard and uh, 115 only in the fish meal, two protein sources and uh, vegetable protein sources and high on moss. Um, in this case, one group uh, of the other groups in the trial and there were like, uh, there were like eight or nine uh, was uh, in the same area. The other ones were all closer to or worse than the fish meal control. So, uh, there hasn't been many repetitions of this type of setup, but there are some subsequent publications that measured the same or similar outcomes and confirmed that, that, that uh, reduced salmon loss infestation as publication one and three and improved intestinal status. It's, in, it's publication one, two, and three, and improved growth, which are publications two and three. However, these uh, citations on this slide, they used the double inclusion rate of different MOS preparations, uh, of MOS preparations from different suppliers, not uh, two gram per kilo feed, which was the maximum uh, in the 2010 study, mm in MacroGuard, but four gram per kilo feed uh, of the other brands. That's, to me, that suggests that the beneficial effects of moss in vegetable protein feed formulations follow a dose response pattern. Uh, at the end, I want to say uh, you uh, thanks in Brazilian, obrigado. I thank Bioregion Europe and Bioregion Brazil for financial support to study number three, for donation of MacroGuard for study number four, and for giving access to a couple of hitherto unpublished results. I also say thanks to Joao Fernando Albers Koch for borrowing me the results tables showing the study setup and outcomes of the SRS trial. The image on the bottom is from the feed control center of a medium sized Norwegian salmon farming company. So this looks like Cape Canaveral, doesn't it? To all of you, please visit Aquamedic website. Uh, if you are interested, you can show a little bit more on what we are doing, what services we offer to uh, farmers and to uh, the suppliers of uh, aquaculture, uh, of commercial aquaculture. And I will say thank you. Dr. Paul, thank you very much for this uh, really technical and very informative presentation. I really think that uh, the talk gives some food for thoughts and uh, our participants are going to be more than happy to continue with their questions and inquiries. So, dear participants, now we will begin with our question and answering session. Uh, and I would like to take this chance and introduce our speakers to the first question, 
which is, is there any kind of a better feeding period before exposure to a pathogen or stressful management when a possibly we can apply these materials? Uh, so, uh, any of you who feel comfortable, please uh, let us uh, hear, let us hear your thoughts. Okay, uh, thank you, Van. Thank you for the question. Uh, Dr. Paul, if you agree, I can start. Uh, and after that, you can compliment, please. Okay, uh, it's an important question. And uh, to respond that, can you hear me well? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, we we contract a trial uh, to be run here in Brazil. Is Dr. Barros from São Paulo State University. Uh, and what we did in this trial, we fed in Iotilapias during 7, 15, 30, and 45 days before a pathogen challenge. And uh, in this trial, we verified that uh, if you use Macrogar during 7 days, before a challenge, you will not see uh, great results, okay? Uh, but in other hands, if you feed the animals during 15 consecutive days at least, you are going to see increases in lysozyme, complement, and another important uh, factors from the, the innate immune system. So uh, the, the answer is at least at least 15 days uh, before some uh, stressful management or challenge or transference for uh, cold to hot season. So, I mean, but I don't know, Dr. Poe, would you like to, to compliment? Yeah, I will. Um, I can I can support your view. It's also our experience and, and in, in our situations with the, where the water is much colder, we actually prefer to uh, or prefer to or we recommend to use it at least four weeks before mm. before a challenge will occur. And we also actually recommend uh, to to be using the uh, the beta glucan, uh, let's say for the period when the challenge is present. Uh, also, even after the the the, the prime the primary exposure, uh, with the <clears throat> with the, the manan, I uh, the most I think it's more or less a question of of continuous use, uh, in my opinion. I think it's uh, appears to me to be the best. But with the beta glucans, it's important not to wait until the challenge is already there and the fish are already getting sick because because for lysozyme uh, uh, levels to go up and also macro, uh, macrophage activation to go up, it takes some time. It doesn't, this isn't like an electrical uh, switch. Uh, they, these are cells and, 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 and mechanisms that need to take effect over some time. Really important, Dr. Poe, and also because we are going to use uh, the diet uh, to provide better glucose to the animals. And we know uh, when the, the, the fish are sick, and the most of the time yeah. they they will not uh, they are not being consuming the diet, so it's important to to start uh, previously the, the the pathogen occurring. There are more questions, Ivan. Yes, uh, thank you for this detailed explanation. Hopefully it meets our audience requirements. Uh, so the second question is, when we discontinue the macroguard application into the feed, how long time uh, the product will still have effect upon the fish? In other words, is there any residual effect after the application of macroguard is uh, out of the practices. Mm. Uh, okay, Eva, uh, again, uh, it's uh, another important question and uh, we, we verified a trial that was published last year about this this issue, about this topic, uh, again using Niotilap as a, a biological model and uh, we could note that uh, it's always uh, preferable if the animals are consuming uh, macrogar or beta glucan 
uh, at the moment that they are going to face some challenge. But uh, in this trial, we could verify that uh, after seven days that you uh, stop feeding uh, uh, the animals with microgar, uh, the effects is going to be quite uh, decreased. I mean, always better uh, to, to, to provide microgar at the moment that the animals are going to face some challenge pathogen uh, that could be a, a virus, a bacteria, uh, parasites, whatever. So, uh, because uh, with the, the, the days, uh, over the days, we're going to see decreasing in the immunological parameters. Uh, and these authors evaluated lysozyme, myeloperoxidase, and uh, respiratory burst, and they could notice a decreasing over the time. Dr. Cole, do you have something? Yeah, I, I just, just to add, I'm not aware that, let's say, the duration of uh, after discontinuation of beta-glucan feeding has been has been uh, published in in the salmon. But obviously, what takes what take takes time to build up will also uh, wear wear off or or be reduced with time. So at our temperatures, it's uh, it's it will probably have after two to three weeks. I suspect that the effects will be uh, back to the baseline uh, level. But uh, it's actually an interesting. It's it's it, there are. Has not, I'm not aware of publications that can prove can give uh, actual data on this on in the sun mm -hmm. world. Yeah, but uh, quite important to our point of view to, to bring us uh, the importance uh, of the temperature. Uh, I mean, the results for yes. salmon, for sure, uh, will not be the same for Nile tilapia because you are talking about a, a cold water species and a, a tropical species. So yes. it's quite important also to, to have it in mind. Yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, we still have time, I guess, to to answer one more question, which, by the way, I find really intriguing. And the question is, is it bad to provide these immunomodulators in the absence of diseases? Meaning causing inflammation results in wasted calories used to fight off an infection that doesn't exist. Is timing important? or should these types of product be administered continuously as an insurance policy? Dr. Paul, I think you are the, the perfect person to, to, to explain about this important question. Yes, maybe I maybe I can take it at that. I was I was the reason I was interested in the in the uh, to do the, the pilot studies on anti-inflammatory effects. Uh, was uh, was uh, because it, it 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 challenged the opinion that it it is uh, let's say in that it is pro-inflammatory or uh, and and I think due to that I uh, I don't see any I haven't been aware of any danger in terms of of actually feeding beta glucans or using beta glucans as a human even if you're not sick. Or if you're not facing challenge, um, the, the, the the basis for this is starting to to become uh, published, because uh, you will find some of the recent macroguard, the, the basic science macroguard uh, and our uh, med, uh, macrophage papers, they talk about uh, they they introduce the term polarization of macrophages, which means that macro there are some macrophages that are that are uh, specializing in in uh, in strengthening the macrophage activity and other ones are in 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 reducing and in, uh, in 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 providing pro-inflammatory cytokines and other uh, populations of macrophages are in the in the in uh, specializing to produce uh, anti-inflammatory uh, cytokines and I think that is probably, but I don't think, uh, at least I haven't understood the full bearing of this yet myself. But I think so. So I, I am not, I'm not very concerned that you will induce, um, uh, induce uh, a lot of infl inflammation by using macroguard on its uh, on itself. The, the the effects are not in primary inflammatory; they are 
actually mediated through lysozyme and macrophage, re removing the source of uh, of uh, that could possibly uh, uh, cause inflammation, bacteria mm -hmm. or viruses. Uh, important. I think we received the, this question uh, from Morgan, right? Uh, Morgan Fernil. Uh, thank you, Morgan. Uh, it's important and I'd like to mention, uh, last Friday I participated in a, in a committee, a PhD committee here in Brazil, uh, where this, this, this guy worked with meta-analysis to evaluate uh, glucose and growth performance. We know that it's not the objective of this concept, uh, to evaluate its growth performance, but why I'm saying it to you? Uh, because in 55 of uh, the published articles uh, regarding macrogar or glucans inside the diets, in 55 trials we could see improvements in growth performance. I mean, uh, for sure the immune system can use some part of the energy because it's an uh, energy consumption, uh, the, the immune system, but uh, you will not see worsening in growth performance if you use the ideal doses of the, the glucan in general. For sure, if you overstimulate, if you're using a lot of uh, glucan inside your diet, you can face some problems. But using the ideal uh, doses, you, you are going to have uh, immunomodulation okay not just a uh, immune stimulant in your diet and uh, with that you will not see deterioration in growth performance okay thank you joao uh, and now we uh, comes to our last question for the day which i find also very interesting and probably with a lots of practical application. Can macrogard be used against any pathogenic agent, viral, bacteria or parasites? I believe it's a really very practical question mm. which probably deserves some attention as well. Yeah, Dr. Paul, would you like to start again? Uh, yeah, to put it, put it uh, simply, of course you can. But it, uh, you should not expect the same effects against any uh, pathogenic agent. That is the reason why I think that the biggest benefit that I have been observing is on the situations in which are quite, quite serious pathogens that are not well enough controlled uh, with, uh, with uh, vaccines that are suboptimally controlled and prevented by vaccines. If you use, if you, for example, if you, if you use the, the pharyngolosis bacterium, uh, macro, <laughs> macro guard alone is not strong enough. And uh, we, well, but it might have, it's also, it's what we call in veterinary terms, the facultative pathogens, the ones that are, that are uh, partially uh, providing, uh, pro provide, pro providing disease in, in massive, uh, when they are occur in, in massive uh, infectious pressure. I think that's the both. So, so you shouldn't you shouldn't expect the same effect on, uh, but but in any case there will be so in so macroguard alone will not be enough for some of the the serious infectious uh, infections. They, you need the vaccines in addition. Thank you, Dr. Paul. Yeah, the same. Uh, uh, I would say the most of the trials that we are uh, running using macrogar we could see improvements in survival after some bacterial and parasites uh, but for sure we need to test the product against some virus that's uh, that's present uh, also inside the aquaculture but uh, I, I totally agree we need to to, to test the products uh, against different kind of pathogens and we cannot expect always the same results i i totally agree but we need to think that we uh, we are working with a immunomodulator. So, uh, regardless the the kind of disease that you will face, your immune system is gonna be improved. So, uh, for the most of the challenge that you are gonna face inside aquaculture, we can expect some uh, improvements in terms of survival.
Okay, uh, thank you, Joao. Thank you, Dr. Paul, as well, <clears throat> for this detailed information on that question as well. So, uh, with this, I would like to discontinue with our question and answering session because we're running out of time. And um, dear participants, uh, our webinar has come to its end. The questions that have left without answer should be addressed later. We'll be more than happy to do that. Just uh, send any further inquiries to our email address bioregion at bioregion.net and then we shall gladly address all the remaining questions and concerns any one of you may possibly have. We will give to them our immediate attention, of course, and reply back as soon as possible. I also would like to thank this opportunity and ask all of you to fill in the evaluation survey of this webinar. This survey will be sent to your emails and your, your feedback is going to be eagerly anticipated. Thanks again to everyone. It's, have been, it, it's been a pleasure having you with us today and uh, we really appreci appreciate your attention and participation in this webinar. We also would like to say thank you to Joao Koch and Dr. Paul Mittling for their detailed and hard work uh, explanations and uh, for the informative presentations. With all this, again, thank you very much and I really hope that Bioregion will see any one of you soon. Thank you. Dr. Paul, would you like to say some words? Well, I think uh, I am uh, say thank you for, uh, for listening. Thank you to Bioregion for inviting me to give this uh, summary and I look forward to do more, more in vivo research with uh, the beta-glucans and with nucleotides and with monoligosaccharides. It certainly is an important uh, point and, and actually aquaculture and salmon and aquaculture needs all the means it can get to reduce uh, the challenges posed by infectious, uh, various types of infection. Really important. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Paul, again, again for, for being with us today. It's quite important to, to have you here with us, uh, a key opinion leader inside the Norwegian uh, aquaculture market. So it's uh, a pleasure for us having you here, um, here with us. Uh, Ivan, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and also Juan our sales representatives, our executive guys in, in Europe. And also thank you by region, the marketing team uh, for this webinar. I think uh, it was quite important uh, discussion that we had here today. And uh, unfortunately, we we have no time to to respond to another question that we received, but please uh, Morgan Cornell and Sushi Pran Let's keep in touch. We can schedule uh, a call, schedule a meeting to respond to your question because I was reading now and it's quite important. Okay, so thank you everybody for, for being with us today. Uh, and we continue totally available to, to continue our, our uh, discussion related to glucans and nucleotides inside fish diets. Thank you and have a nice night or afternoon, okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye.